lecture we have learned about Rankine cycle. Now first let us consider the limitation of Rankine cycle. I will be explaining it to T S diagram. Let us consider a T S diagram. This is point 1 that is inlet to the turbine. This is point 2 that is after expansion. This is point 3 that is after the liquid went through condenser. This is point 4 that is after pumping. Now you can see that this is the expansion line. Steam after expansion lies in liquid plus vapor region in certain conditions. Now I would like to mention one point that is after expansion through the turbine the maximum moisture content should be only 15% otherwise it will corrode the blades of turbine so this point 2 should lie outside this saturated vapor line this could be done by reheating so this is the line if we reheat this line it went like this and then again then you can see that this line lies in saturated vapor line now this we could consider as point 2 that is after turbine expansion the dryness fraction that is moisture content is, should be less than 15% that is dryness, dryness fraction should be 0.85 dryness fraction is the amount of vapors in the mixture of liquid and vapor now if this is the condition then the problem of less than 15% moisture content could be overcome now I will be explaining this through the, through the other flow diagram let us consider this flow diagram this is boiler we supply heat to the boiler let it be Q1 at constant pressure now the steam that is uh, at pressure T1 and temperature T1 goes to high pressure turbine now after partial expansion you can see that in HPT that is high pressure turbine there is partial expansion we send the steam back to the boiler to reheat it that is you can see the steam is sent back to the boiler now after heating it in the boiler at constant pressure of let us, let us consider it at P3 after heating at P3 and the same temperature T1 we will be reheating it to the same temperature of T1 and pressure of P3 it is sent to low pressure turbine for the other expansion that is for overall expansion you can see the steam is sent back to low pressure turbine now the steam after expansion to the low pressure turbine is sent to the condenser in condenser there is conversion of the steam to the liquid at constant pressure and constant temperature now the liquid is sent to the pump that is 0.5 it is the inlet to the pump and pump now compresses the steam that is it sends the steam back to the boiler now friends we will be understanding this diagram through TS diagram let us take ordinate as T and FC as S this is the dome of the TS diagram first let us consider the constant pressure heat addition This is the constant pressure line that is constant pressure heat addition at a pressure of P1. This is inside the boiler. Now, after the boiler, the steam goes through high pressure turbine that is expansion occurs in the high pressure turbine till saturated vapor line. This is the expansion. This is point 1 that is inlet to the turbine, HP inlet to the high pressure turbine, and this is the exhaust of the high pressure turbine that is point 2S. Now, after the expansion of the high pressure turbine, the steam is sent back to the boiler for constant pressure heat addition but at pressure of P3 and same temperature. So, this is again constant pressure heat addition at the pressure of P3. You can see this is P3 and the temperature of T1. T is equal to T1. The Temperature for both high pressure turbine and low pressure turbine is same. That is, steam is superheated. That is, steam is reheated to the same temp to the same temperature. You can see the temperature. This both are same. Now, after the constant pressure heat addition, there is expansion inside the low pressure turbine. You can see this is the expansion. 
This is point 1, this is point 2s. Now, this is point 3 that is inlet to the low pressure turbine and 4s is the exhaust from the low pressure turbine. Now, at 4s, the steam enters the condenser and there is change of phase that is steam gets converted into the steam gets converted into the liquid that is water at a constant pressure of P2 this is P2 and P2 you can see now this is phase change that is this occurs in condenser from 4s to 5 this is point 5 now at 5 the steam is sent to the pump to compress the liquid you can see now 5 and this is 6s 5 to 6s is pumping of the liquid to the same pressure same pressure of P1 now you can see this 1 to 2s and 3 to 4s is expansion so during this process we are getting a work by turbine so from 1 to 2s and 3 to 4s we have WT that is work done by turbine now as I have already told you about the enthalpy and how to get the heat and how to derive the formula for the work done and heat supply so now work done by turbine is equal to H1 minus H2S during high pressure turbine H1 minus H2S plus the work, work done during low pressure turbine that is H3 minus H4S This is the work done by the pipe. Now, work done by pump, pumping is from 5 to 6s. So, work done by pump WP is equal to H6s minus H5. This is the work done by pump. This is the work done by turbine. Now, heat supply is during, during process 6s to 1 and from the process 2s to 3. That is, this 2s to 3 is reheating. This is and this. This is the heat supply. So, heat supply Q is equal to H6s minus H1. H6s minus H1 plus H2, H3 minus H2s. And here it will be H1 minus H6s. Q is equal to H1 minus H6s plus H3 minus H2s. This is the heat supply. Now we know that efficiency is equal to WP minus WP that is net work then during the process divided by heat supply. This is the efficiency. So Efficiency is given by work done by turbine that is H1 minus H2S plus H3 minus H4S minus work done by pump that is H6S minus H5 all divided by heat supply that is H1 minus H6S plus H3 minus H2S that is reheating. This is the efficiency of the reheat cycle. Now, the other performance criteria for the reheat cycle is steam rate. The formula for steam rate is given by 3600 by net work that is. Work done by turbine minus work done by pump kg per kilowatt r. This is the formula for steam rate. Now, as we know that efficiency is equal to output by input. Here, output is net work and input is heat supply so efficiency can be increased 
by either increasing the output or decreasing the input. In rigid cycle, efficiency is increased by increasing the output. This could be explained with the help of PS diagram. This is the clear diagram for rigid cycle. You can see this is the network during the right hand cycle. If we join this, this is the work net this during the right hand cycle. But in the rigid cycle, additional work is produced. This is the additional area that is added up in the rigid cycle. So the network is increased in the rigid cycle. Now the other thing to be mentioned is that in the reheat cycle we have only two reheats because all the turbines are to be mounted on the same shaft. You can see this is this is the shaft on, on the high on which the high pressure turbine and the low pressure turbine are mounted. But when we mount this turbine on the shaft, there is increase in the stress if more than two reheats are mounted on the shaft. So this is the disadvantage of the reheat cycle. Thank you.